Hallelujah. Well, lift up your hands to the Most High God and begin to bless Him. Give Him all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration. Bless the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who can raise the dead. Praise Him. The one who can confuse your attackers. Praise Him. Give Him glory. Give Him honor. Give Him adoration. The one who can make the barren fruitful. Praise Him. He is still here. The one who can make sure that you don't fail again. Praise Him. Give Him all glory. Give Him double portion praise. Praise Him. Magnify His holy name. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. Oh, Lord, glory be to your holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor, amen. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Savior. Ancient of days, the I am that I am, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the ending, the unchangeable changer, wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The I am that I am, 
the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Holy One of Israel. Oh, glory be to your holy name. Thank you for what you've done in the past. Thank you for what you're about to do today. Please, Lord, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. All I'm asking, Lord God Almighty, is that in the lives of all your children, all over the world, let your name be glorified today. Before this service is over, let your children know the meaning of wonderful. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, someone shout hallelujah. Well, look around you. There might be two or three people you have not seen yet this year. So shake hands with them and say happy new year. You can't say Happy New Year and be frowning. Say, say Happy New Year. The word is happy, happy. <laughs> happy New Year. <laughs> all right, I want to say Happy New Year to all of you too. <laughs> now you may be seated except uh, those born in the month of January. If you are born in the month of January, let me hear you shout hallelujah. My Father and my God, I commit all your children born in the month of January into your hands. January is the first month of the year. For this, your children, in everything good, let them confess. In every facet of their lives, Lord, give them a brand new beginning. A new beginning of success, of joy, of miracles, of signs, of wonders, and of serving you. So let it be, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Well, if we're born in January, shout another hallelujah. I am going to sit tonight. Um, now I will tell you why. I don't know exactly what God wants to do tonight, but uh, I suspect that it's going to be extraordinary. <laughs> to start with, when yesterday at the Holy Communion, I was telling those who are here that one of the powers of the double portion anointing is ability to make decrees and see them come to pass. I didn't know how far God wanted to take that. I explained to those of you who were here yesterday that uh, prophecies are good, particularly if they come from God. 
there are some funny people in Nigeria who call themselves prophets. They don't even know the meaning of prophecy. I'm not a prophet, but I know the way God speaks because he talks to me once in a while. I'm a pastor. I'm satisfied with that office. But when somebody says he's prophesying and he says three people are contesting for a post, if the first one wins, there'll be plenty of food. If the second one wins, there'll be plenty to drink. If the third wins, there'll be plenty to wear. That's not prophecy. That's conjecture. If God is the one speaking, eh? <laughs> It will tell you there are three people contesting and this is the one who will win. That's the way God talks. There's no if or maybe. And then I explain that prophecy could come and there's something could happen along the way that could cause God to change his mind. He is the Almighty. He said, Tell Eli, I said indeed that you and your father's house will stand before me forever. He said, But now, I said, Be it far from me. I change my mind. And if you don't like it, go and sue me. <laughs> He's the Almighty. He does as He pleases in heaven. Nobody can query Him. He's the original majesty. But when it comes to a decree, oh, <laughs> when he said to Abraham, tell your wife, nine months from now, she'll be carrying a son. Sarah laughed. He said, you are laughing. Well, he said, go ahead, keep laughing. But I've decreed. That's why when the baby was born, they call him laughter. When God decrees, hmm? <laughs> nobody can change it. Believe it or not, he himself can change it when it decrees so it is done so when I was praying for this evening and daddy says the first thing I should do is to issue certain decrees I knew something's about to happen. So I said, what do I decree? Fortunately, he had given me the song that you sang. He said, look at the song I gave you. The decrees are there. So I hereby decree this will be your year. This year, 
you will succeed. This year, you will rejoice. This year, you will be glad. This year, God will move you from one success to a greater one. On a daily basis, this year, God will move you from glory to glory. If you receive it, shout hallelujah. And that's one. That's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm sure this is not going to be an ordinary night. Because whether you believe it or not, in any case, you know I won't lie. The devil fought since morning that I won't be here this evening. You say, what happened? Well, I tell you. I've been in my prayer room for days. I didn't go out. So, you can't say that I went out and I ate something bad yesterday. No. And then I woke up this morning with terrible stomach disorder. Pain. The kind that I've never experienced for a long, long time. Uh -uh. What's wrong? I went to the toilet expecting that I wish myself and everything will, will go. I began to ask myself, what did I eat? What did I drink? <laughs> I ate nothing. It started like a joke. Ah. I had to go and pray with the senior pastors at six o'clock. I'm telling you the one hour I spent with them was uh, a little hell on earth. They didn't notice though. I hid it from them because <laughs> I didn't want them to panic. So I managed to get back to my prayer room after I left them and the service started and the praying grew worse. Ah. Little by little. I was listening to the preacher. By the way, thank God for the preacher. That was a beautiful, beautiful summer. <laughs> that was like me. Yeah, that was like me. Took it from bad to not too bad to good to very good and to wonderful. <laughs> That's mathematical, man. That was good. That was good. Glory be to God. Give the Lord a big round of applause. That was good. <laughs> 
Yes. Don't deny it. That was good. So he was preaching, and I was listening, even though I was in agony. Then all of a sudden, he said something. He said, say amen, somebody. He said there was a brother the other, the other time who said amen and what was troubling him got out of him. <laughs> so I said amen loud and clear. Now he said that just before it was about to end, then he concluded, and then the choir began to worship to bring mommy forward to pray. By now I should be getting dressed. But the stomach was still misbehaving. But a few minutes after I said amen, I just felt something saying, run to the toilet. I ran to the toilet. And what was troubling me got out. Whatever is troubling you, stand on your feet and shout, Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. <laughs> so I know something is happening here tonight. Our fasting will start on the 11th of January as usual. And it will be for only 50 days. I, I was expecting 100 days, but uh, only 50 days from January 11 to 1st of April. Sorry, 1st of March. <laughs> January 11 to 1st of March. This is you, you break on a daily basis. If you're already 70 and above, you are excused. But if you insist, if you're over 70 and you still want to join us, you can break by 3 p.m. If you are 80 and above, definitely you are excused. But if you insist, then you can break by 12 noon. And as usual, if you miss one day, maybe 
your friend is getting married and <laughs> you, <laughs> you can't resist the jollof rice. If you miss one day, it means after we have all finished, you will add two extra days to yours for every day you miss. Which means if you miss 10 days, <laughs> you will probably be finishing your own at the end of March. But some may want to just fast continuously, no breaking. Then 21 days will be enough. So you can do singles for 50 days, continuous for 21 days. I know some people who always say, oh, this man is clever. He said, if you are 80, you can't do it because he's 80. <laughs> you know me now. Not only will I do the singles, God helping me, I will do the continuous too. Just pray that God will give me strength. And I know he will. Now, tonight we want to begin to discuss a series called Wonderful. So we are discussing Wonderful Part 1. Second Kings chapter 2, from verse 8 to 15. Second Kings chapter 2, 8 to 15. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. By the way, this will be your year of double portions. <laughs> and he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I'm taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as the sea went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a wild wind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Hmm. Everything that happened on that day can only be described by one word, wonderful. Elijah took his man to smote River Jordan. River Jordan parted ways, divided into two. Wonderful. Himself and Elisha go to the other side. Elijah said to Elisha, what do you want? I want a double portion of your spirit. Ah, boy, 
Can't you see what I have done with one portion? I mean, with one portion I raised the dead. With one portion I shut the heavens. With one portion I multiplied the food of a widow. With one portion I did some marvelous things. And you are asking for double boy? Wonderful boy. How many of you want double portion? <laughs> then look at your fellow and tell him, I'm wonderful, you know. <laughs> wonderful request. And why they were still talking? The heavens opened, horses of fire, chariots of fire, the special chariot of the Almighty God came down, grabbed Elijah, pushed Elijah to some side. Before you knew it, Elijah was gone. Wonderful. Elisha grabbed the mantle that fell from his father, went back to the river Jordan, rolled the mantle together just like he saw his father doing. Uh, and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? The God of Elijah said, I am here. Wonderful. Everything that happened that day, there's only one way to describe it. That's wonderful. I have a feeling that something is about to happen here tonight that can only be called wonderful. Now, what is a wonder? I think I've, I've told you the definition of a wonder before. And somebody described it as something that causes you to wonder. A wonder is something that happens, something so big that your mouth will open involuntarily. That you do what you would normally not do. You, you would have done it before you even know what you are doing. For example, when that girl was testif testifying about the mother, who died. That, I, I mean, mouth stuff with cotton wool, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and then they applied uh, anointing oil, and all of a sudden, after hours, the woman came back to life. I saw all of you standing up to praise God. Nobody asked you to, but you saw a wonder. Something is going to happen in your life today. And it will be wonderful. When my pastor was testifying and he said about these killers that we laid them, and then the one who was pointing a gun at them suddenly began to dance. Who is beating the drum? Which music was he hearing? And he danced away from them, danced to their back, so that they can continue on their journey. What do you call that one? <laughs> this year, all your enemies will be confused. In Acts chapter 3, if you read it from verse 1 to 11, Acts 3 from verse 1 to 11, the Bible tells us the story of a man who was born lame, who for more than 40 years, everybody in the temple, they knew him, 
was lame, born lame. And these people coming to the temple, some of them had given him, you know, cobbles and naira. When all of a sudden they saw the same man rushing in, walking, leaping, praising God, the Bible said they wondered. In the name of the one who sent me, by the time God finishes with you, people will wonder at you. But, but let, let, let's, let's take this series from the very beginning. It's a series, I don't know how long it's going to last. My last year, oh yeah, I don't know. Let's go to the very beginning. In John chapter 1, from verse 1 to 3, John 1 from verse 1 to 3, and verse 14, the Bible says in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Who can read it on? Then in verse 14, he says, the Word became flesh. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Who is that one? Ah, you got it right, Jesus. So if we want to know the meaning of wonderful, we need to say, wait a minute, what was the name that the father of Jesus gave him Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 he tells us his name shall be called wonderful he added other names so counselors mighty God everlasting father prince of peace but the first name was Wonderful. Wonderful means full of wonders. Two words combined. Wonder and full. I decree in the name of the one who sent me the wonders that will happen in your life this year will be many. Jesus and God, they are the same. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. So let us consider tonight, just a little bit, about the wonders of God. Let us consider the size of God. How big is God? If we can finish that one tonight, we would have done very well. How big is God? First Kings chapter eight, verse twenty-seven. First Kings chapter eight, from verse I mean verse twenty-seven. The, the Bible says, "The heaven of heavens cannot contain him." Now that's big. <laughs> the heaven of heavens cannot contain him. So maybe we should start by considering the size of his leg. How big is his leg? Isaiah 66 verse 1. Isaiah 66 verse 1. God said, Heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Now, we, we don't know exactly how far away heaven is, but we know that it is at least far, 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 far beyond the sun. 
And science has shown us even the sun is very far away. Heaven is his throne. The earth is full stool. There must be one very big leg. What is the implication of that kind of leg? It means when God is seated in heaven, is controlling everything that is going on here on earth. Because the earth is his full stool. When you read Psalm 2 from verse 1 to 4, Psalm 2 from verse 1 to 4, David was telling us, what's wrong with all these people who are saying that we are going to deal with the anointed of God, we are going to trouble him. He said, he that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. You know what that means? When somebody is threatening you, God is laughing. If anybody says, you're not going to be promoted, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. <laughs> when the doctors told that young lady, take your mother home, there's nothing more we can do for her. She's going to die. No way she can live. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. If somebody tells you that you, there's no way you can ever have your own children, he that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. If anybody tells you that you are not going to see the coming year, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. If anybody tells you that there's no way you can make it in life, that you are going to die poor. He that seated in the heavens. <laughs> in Isaiah 54, verse 15, Isaiah 54, verse 15, God himself said, Behold, they shall surely gather together but not by me. And whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Are they holding a meeting to describe how they are going to destroy you? He that sitteth in the heavens, Allah. In Isaiah 54 from verse 16 to 17, Isaiah 54 from verse 16 to 17, the Almighty God said, I wait a minute. Even all the weapons they say they want to use, I made them. I said, that's why no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That's why for the rest of your life, you should walk about victorious. Why? Because he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. So even when he's sitting down, you are secure. What happens when he stands? <laughs> Psalm 68 from verse 1 to 3. Psalm 68 from verse 1 to 3. He said, let God arise. What will happen to his enemies? <laughs> they be scattered. I say if they don't if they don't run, then they will melt. Is there in Psalm 68 from verse 1 to 3? 
just like wax will melt, melt before fire. You know, I've told my children, when the fire of God fell on Samson, and the ropes binding him were burnt as by fire, and he took the jawbone of Anasa and he began to fight. The reason he killed only 1,000 was because the rest were wise. They ran. Any enemy against you this year that fails to run, the fire of God will consume. In Psalm 104, verse 32, Psalm 104, verse 32, the Bible says, when God looks on the earth, just looking at the earth, preparing to stand, the earth will already begin to tremble. And when that one, that tall, begins to move on earth, the earth begins to shake. Every step he takes, the air trembles. So that by the time he arrives at any place, the trembling will be so much there will be an earthquake. You don't believe me, read Acts chapter 16. I read it from verse 25 to the end. Acts 16, 25 to the end. Make sure you read it. Take note of certain things that will happen. Number one, the foundations of prison will begin to shake. All prison doors will open. Every yoke will be loosed. Enemy will become servant. And captors will come to beg. <laughs> do you know that's what God is about to do for you tonight? <laughs> you see, the reason I always ask you to shout hallelujah, the reason you find hallelujah in all my songs, is because whenever you shout hallelujah, God draws near. Now let's, let's look at how long are his hands. In Deuteronomy 33 verse 27, Deuteronomy 33 verse 27, the Bible says, underneath are the everlasting arms. That means, there's, there's no way you can measure his arms. Very, very long. Everlastingly. And you may want to perform a little experiment. This is scientific. That if you stretch your hands wide, the left, as far as you can go, the right, as far as it can go, and you measure from the tip of your forefinger here to the tip of your forefinger there, and then you measure your height, the two will be the same. <laughs> so if you want to know how tall you are, and there's no scale to all you need to do, just go against the wall. Get somebody to mark where the forefinger is there and where the forefinger is there and measure the two. I mean the gap between the two. That's your height. Now, <laughs> now you say, what has that got to do? We seem to be bringing mathematics into this. What has that got to do with God? 
Psalm 90 verse 2. Psalm 90 verse 2. It says, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. When he stretches out his hands, he covers everything. From your far, far beginning to your far, far ending. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. From your beginning to your ending, He is in charge. When He said in Jeremiah chapter 1, from verse 4 to 5, Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5, he said, before I formed thee, I knew thee. Thank you, Father. Well, somebody will have to stand now. The Lord said, when you said amen, he had you. But he says, there is still some things left in some people. And whatever those things are, we go when they shout hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Please be seated. You will testify. I say it again. You will testify. You will testify because when next you visit your doctor, what they thought they saw will no longer be there. Now, when we are talking about your origin, the question had always been, when is the origin of a house? And some people will say, yeah, I mean, the beginning of a house is uh, the foundation. But no. Anybody who knows anything about building will tell you, no, 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 no. Before we dig the foundation, there must be a drawing. So you may say, okay, the beginning of a house is the drawing. But no. Before the architect began to draw, the owner of the house had a vision of what the house must be like whether it's a three-bedroom bungalow or something. So you could say the beginning of the house started in the mind of the landlord. But no, the beginning of the house started, somebody will say, when the landlord was born. And many of you who are here today, you, you have no idea 
of what God is going to achieve through you. But they will begin to pop up now. But no, the beginning of the house was not when the landlord was born. The beginning of the house was before the father met the mother. Before I formed thee, I knew thee. But no, the beginning of the house was not when the father met the mother. The beginning of the house was even before the father and the mother were formed. And you can go on tracing it and you discover the beginning of the house was in God. <laughs> before he made the heavens and the earth, he knew who was going to build a house. When I was praying and I said, Lord, be, build me a boy's quarter. He said, emotion. He said, Son, don't ask me for a boy's quarter. I've decided to build you a city. This place was total jungle there. But God had already seen a place where millions can gather to shout hallelujah to him. I wasn't born here. That's when one big officer of government years ago said that he was going to uh, pull down the camp. I said, ha ah. <laughs> ha. This is not my building. You can't pull down what God is building. I will cancel your certificate of occupancy. I said, ha. Ah, my father will cancel your certificate of occupancy on the earth. Uh, somebody is bigger than somebody. Anybody threatening you, tell them, you are not my alpha. You cannot be my omega. You don't behave, I will hand you over to the Alpha and the Omega. Tell the fellow next to you, your tomorrow will be all right. <laughs> so stop worrying, stop worrying. From everlasting to everlasting is God. And there's something very interesting about his arms. And that is, as we read it in Deuteronomy 33, verse 27, the everlasting arms are underneath. You know what that means? You can never go so low that God cannot reach you. <laughs> Your case can never be called hopeless. If you are a child of God. Because as the lower you go, you will just find that his hands are still underneath. In John chapter 11, from verse 39 to 44, John 11, 39 to 44, the sister of uh, Lazarus said, Master, he's been dead four days, but now he's thinking. So the Lord says, so what? <laughs> dead four days, so what? What about those who had become dry bones? In Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 10. If I can raise dead bones. What's the problem with somebody who's been dead only for this? Every sickness in your life that they attribute to old age, my father will pull them out. Yeah. 
Thank you, Father. This one is for one particular fellow. He said, your parents are among the poorest in your village. Daddy asked me to tell you, very soon, you will be the richest in that village. Underneath are the everlasting arms. Means no matter how low you are, he can pick you up from there. And can then begin to promote you. Because this hand, and underneath you, can pick you up and begin to lift you up. First Samuel chapter 2, from verse 7 to 8, First Samuel 2, 7 to 8, it tells you, it's God who brings down, it's the one who raises up, it's the one who makes poor, it's the one who makes rich. And he said he can pick up a beggar from the downhill and can keep on raising him up until he begins to sit among princes. <laughs> the first preacher made a point. I don't know if you all notice it. He said all oh, the people he referred to in his sermon were in the book of Kings. In the book of Kings. When we talk about Kings, we are talking about royalty. We are talking about wealth. We are talking about influence. We are talking about power. And that's why everyone he referred to from the one who was so broke, they were going to sell the, 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 the children, to the one who wasn't, he hadn't borrowed, but he had only one meal left, all the way to the one who could sacrifice a thousand offering in one day. They all turned out to become royalties. The one who had one meal left, the meal just kept on multiplying. The one who had just a, a bottle of oil left, that one multiplied so much that after she paid off her debt, she never had to borrow again. I have good news for somebody. I will see you at the top. I wasn't planning to tell you stories tonight, even though I have illustration for each one. But there's one I want to remind you. You've had it before, but some of you never had it. That was when we went to an African country, and I just felt led to see the head of state. At first, they told me this cannot be possible. After some time, we met somebody who said, Well, an old man who was an old bishop, he said, I taught him in school. I will take you to see him because he will always see me. Good. But we got there and they told me Monday morning, maximum time you can get from him is 15 minutes. I said, ah, that's more than enough. After 15 minutes, he rang a bell. The fellow who came, he thought he was coming to take me out. He said, uh, bring me a pot of tea and two cups. And it, because he asked me, Pastor, would you like to drink tea? Ah, who am I to refuse royal tea? <laughs> 
For two hours, we were talking. We were enjoying ourselves. The cabinet was to meet. The cabinet was waiting. Because the president was seeing the son of a farmer whose name was not known before. I decree in the name that's above every other name, I will see you at the top. Not only can he promote, he can promote everlastingly. You know, my prayer is that every one of you, one way or the other, you will end up a pastor. <laughs> Some of you didn't want to say amen to that. <laughs> I will explain. Governments come, governments go. Presidents come, presidents go. The pastor remains forever. Let me tell you one thing. There's nothing like the promotion that comes from God. If human beings promote you, they are the people who will bring you down. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know whether I should say this. When you see, I'm sure you have been watching the campaign rallies. <laughs> I watch it in the news. I don't know if you have noticed that uh, two different people don't hold their campaign simultaneously in a town. Have you noticed that? You don't know why. Because majority of the crowd, the majority are rented. <laughs> so I come, I pay, you gather. After I've gone, another man comes, he pays. You gather. Somebody say, Daddy, you keep on saying that you haven't heard from God about who will win or who will not. Maybe because there are several things occupying my mind. And one of it is when I see the crowd gathering, and if you look at the crowd, the majority of them are young. When I see the hundreds of thousands of youth, you have to be jobless to be attending all these rallies. What's going to happen when the campaigns are over and there's nobody to rent anymore? Don't worry, God will have mercy. When God is the one promoting you, he keeps on promoting you everlastingly. You just keep on going higher and higher and higher. I decree one again, once again, I will meet you at the top. Let me take one, just 
one example. We could take many examples. Well, well, we can take the example of David. The first promotion he got, he was a shepherd boy, and he was anointed to be king among his brethren. Then he was anointed second time to be king over Judah. Then he was anointed the third time to be king over Israel. But by the time you get to Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, you discover long after he was dead, he was referred to as the father of the king of kings. Bartimaeus cried, Jesus, thou son of David. David was promoted everlastingly. Consider Elisha, because he's the one that we are dancing around for now. He became the son of a prophet in 1 Kings chapter 19, from 19 to 21. 1 Kings 19 from verse 19 to 21. A worthy farmer needs promotion to become a son of the prophet. Then in 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 15, 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 15, he became the prophet because other sons of prophets came to bow down before him. But do you know that even when he died, when he died, his dead bone was still raising the dead. That was great, man. i tell you this story. Probably had it too before. Not quite sure. I went to America. And one of my sons put a bit of pressure on me that I should come to his house to eat. So I said, all right. So I went. And I sat on a chair before going to the dining table. And after I left, he sat on the chair and discovered that the prayer he prayed was uh, instantly answered. So he shared the testimony with his uh, friends. And they began to come to his house to sit on the same chair and pray. And they were all getting their miracles. So the news spread. And this, my son, happened to be a very funny fellow. He said, what's going on? These people want to turn my house to Mecca. So he said, I know what I will do. He went and bought another chair, the same type. He took the one that I sat on into his bedroom and put the new chair where the old one was. So when the people came, they would say, that's the chair, that's where it's at. And they were still getting their miracles. <laughs> then he discovered that the anointing didn't stop on the chair. It went right down into the ground. Tonight, as I am sitting here, the anointing is flowing out to you. <laughs> ah, okay. Thank you, Lord. The Lord asked me to tell someone. He said, get ready for hard work. Because many doors will open simultaneously. Then there, 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 there is something about his hand. This, the hand of the Almighty. 
wonders of wonders is that if he keeps you in the hollow of his hand you are forever secure he said it in John chapter 10 verse 27 to 30 John 10 27 to 30 he said nobody can pluck you out of my hand nobody he said it's my father who gave you to me I have decided to give you eternal life he said nobody can take you out of my hand because they can't take you out of my father's hand. You know, we used to sing a song when I was younger. In the hollow of his hand, in the hollow of his hand, I am saying, no matter what betides me, in the hollow of his hand from today onward anybody who tries to harm you will come in contact with the hand of God now there's something called when we talk about wonders then we have what we call wonders of wonders I'm still talking I'm, I'm only talking about the size of God tonight next time we'll talk more about him you know the wonders of wonders is that as big as God is he stands from everlasting to everlasting. His leg reaching down right from heaven to the earth. God can make himself so small as to be able to dwell in the heart of a man. He can make himself so small. First John chapter 4 verse 4. Oh, thank you, Father. Let me say amen to this one. Oh, Lord, thank you very much. The Lord said there is someone here tonight. He said the biggest chapter of your life is about to open. <laughs> oh my, oh my. Tell the fellow next to you, you have not seen anything yet. Oh, I'm going to be very great. Since daddy asked me to tell you this, I will. Years ago, when the Almighty God provided us with a jet, oh, there was a lot of noise. People were criticizing me right, left, and center. They sent EFCC to come and probe me. Where did he get the money to buy a jet? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. The noise was much. Then one day I was flying. Because I didn't buy a jet for pleasure. 
The work has expanded to a level that there's no way I can do it by commercial traveling. But if you want to travel by commercial, you have to wait for their timetable. If I have to wait for their timetable, I won't be able to do what God wants me to do. I mean, to give you an example, I finished a, our European convention in Spain one night. 33 nations gathered together. As soon as I dismissed the program around 12 midnight, I headed straight to the airport to travel over to Hong Kong. I arrived in Hong Kong the following day, did what I needed to do, and then moved on to Singapore. I arrived in Singapore, did what I needed to do, and then headed for Australia. I got to Australia, did what I needed to do, I headed to Papua New Guinea. You can't do all those, and I, I needed to touch all those places, minister to them, de dedicate the churches, uh, ordain pastors, and be back before the next Holy Ghost service. There's no way I can do that by the commercial fire. Lane. That's, that's what led to the jet. The noise was great. And I was becoming a bit disturbed. Father, what do I do now? And then one day I was, I was flying. It was during the day. Far above the cloud. And I just felt the Holy Spirit saying, look out of the window and I looked out of the window I said Lord I, I can't see anything I said look on look down look down at the at the cloud so I looked down and I saw a rainbow now normally a rainbow is an arc but this rainbow that I saw was a complete circle and it was extremely big and I looked down into the center of the rainbow and I see the shape of a plane. And as the, it looks as if the rainbow was moving, always keeping the plane in the middle. And the Lord said to me, son, the shadow you see is the shadow of this your plane. I have you surrounded. I decree to somebody here today, my father, who is a consuming fire, will surround you. He said to me, don't answer them. I have you surrounded. Oh, may the God who surrounds me surround you. <laughs> now, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. He said, greater is he that is in you than he that he is in the world. Who is this greater one? God. As big as he is, he can make himself so small that he can enter into you. And when he's in you, <laughs> automatically, you just keep on succeeding. <laughs> Philippians 4 13. Philippians 4 13 says, I can do all things. How? Through Christ. 
Who is doing what? Supplying the strength. Ah. When is dwelling in you? When anything comes from outside to attack you, he will answer the fellow who comes to knock at the door. Death comes knocking. The he who is called the resurrection and the life will go and answer. Yes, death, what do you want? Oh, sorry, I don't know you live here. Sorrow wants to come, knocking at the door. The one who says, I see your joy before, will go and open the door. Yes, what do you want? No, 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 I don't know you live here. From this moment onward, no evil will come into your house. The conclusion of the matter is that right now he's asking for your permission to come in. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Revelation 3 verse 20. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door unto me, I will come in. I will sup with him. And he with me, he said, I'm ready to come in. Come into your heart. Somebody has said, Daddy, when you are ministering, you will stop and say, Ah, there's someone here. Ah, there's someone here. And then we will discover later on when the fellow comes to testify. He said, But how do you hear the voice? in the midst of all the noise around. He's not out there. He's in. He's in me. When he comes in you, you begin to hear his voice. Small, still voice. How many of you would love to prophesy? <laughs> You want me to decree? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. And some of the things he may tell you may not be the kind of thing you want to hear, but it will be the truth. Are you sure you want me to decree? Yeah. Before the end of this month, you'll be hearing from him. And that is a decree. Yeah. Not a prophecy. You know, the beauty about hearing from him is that no fake prophet can deceive you. A prophet will come and say, I received this one from the Lord. You say, eh, I didn't receive it. <laughs> the Bible made it clear. My sheep hear my voice. You can never be deceived again when you begin to hear from God yourself. Let me tell you one thing, and this is for your ears only. Anyone who's prophesying now, telling you this is a fellow who will win, this is a fellow who is is deceiving you. You know why? Daddy has not spoken yet. He hasn't said anything. So if you say somebody released a prophecy and saying that somebody from this place is a Malayo. Who said so? 
your daddy. Daddy, for what reason or the other, he has been very quiet on this one. You say, oh, but daddy, this is uh, January. Uh, I know. You should tell us so that we will know. Uh, can I tell you what he hasn't told me? You want me to lie to you? Uh, what are we going to get your PVC ready? If he doesn't say anything, when it is time to vote, vote as uh, the Spirit of God will direct you. If he tells me, well, I may tell you or I may not. <laughs> That's why you must let him come into you. So you can hear from him directly. And nobody will be able to deceive you anymore. So those of us who are already children of God, congratulations. If you are not a child of God yet, you have an opportunity tonight. Come forward very quickly. I will count from 1 to 15 because I know you, some of you are very far away tonight. So I count from 1 to 15. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, if you want him to come and dwell in you, run forward to the altar so that I can pray for you and God will save your soul. I'm counting now. One. Two. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he does in the world. Hallelujah. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight.
those of you who are already before the altar and those of you who are on the way, cry to the Almighty God. I want your salvation, Lord. I want you to come and dwell in me so I can begin to hear your voice so that you can begin to direct my path. Save my soul. Wash away my sins. And I will obey you. Whatever you say, that's what I will do. Cry to God. Now the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards these, our new brothers and sisters and intercede for them. That the one who saved our souls, the greater one who is dwelling in us, will begin to dwell in them too. Those of you on the way, keep coming, keep coming. Make sure you get there before I finish praying. Come now, very quickly. Come and call on the Lord. Ask him to save your soul. Ask him to come and dwell in you. Call on him. Call on him. Call on him. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. King of glory, I just want to worship your holy name. You are very wonderful. One of the wonders that you do is salvation of souls. You can take a sinner and turn him to a saint. Thank you for those who have come forward today. Please receive them. Amen. Save their souls. Amen. Let your blood wash them clean. Amen. Please, Lord God Almighty, come and dwell in them Amen. and begin to speak to them. Amen. Begin to guide them. Amen. And from now, anytime they cry unto you, answer them by fire. Amen. And don't let them ever backslide. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I want to rejoice with those of you who have come to surrender your life to Jesus Christ tonight. Uh, this is a very, very special night indeed. And I can assure you, the Almighty God himself will preserve you. But I want to promise you I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. The counselors are around you now. They will give you cards to fill very quickly. And then as soon as you fill the card, return to the counselors and go back to your seats before we continue. We will give you three, four minutes to quickly fill the form before we proceed further. God bless you. Congratulations.
Now, you want to write down your prayer points. Tonight, you're going to really, really pray. Prayer point number one, I want you to praise God double. If you, could, you praise him more than you've ever done before. Spend quality time praising him. Then number two, you will say, Father, please put all my problems under your feet permanently. Put all my problems under your feet permanently. Number three, Father, please arise for me. Just arise for me tonight. Number four, Father, please pay me a personal visit tonight. Give me a divine earthquake. Pay me a personal visit tonight. Give me a divine earthquake. Number five. Father, please go to my earthly source. And uproot every evil there. Please go to my earthly source. And uproot every evil there. Number six, Father, please go to my future and erase any evil waiting for me. Go to my future tonight and erase any evil waiting for me. Number seven, Father, pick me up tonight and promote me everlastingly. Pick me up tonight and promote me everlastingly. Number eight, Father, please keep me forever secure in the hollow of your hand. Keep me forever secure in the hollow of your hand. Number nine, Father, please increase my strength. My ability to succeed. From within me. Increase my strength, my ability to succeed from 
within me. Number 10. Father, reign supreme within me. Reign supreme within me. Number 11. Father, please begin to speak to me loud and clear. Let me begin to hear from you. Number 12 will be your individual requests for this year. The altar is open and I won't disturb you for the next 30 minutes at least so you can have plenty of time talking to the Lord.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In the name of the one called Wonderful, the Lord Jesus himself, all your prayers tonight will be answered by fire. Before the sun rises tomorrow, you will be shouting, Wonderful. And for the rest of this year, on a daily basis, God will do something wonderful for you. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. God bless you. Let's go back to our seats. Thank you, Lord. Now, by the special grace of God, beginning from next month, we'll be closing just a little later than usual, because everyone who comes will have hands laid on you. Because the Bible says two are better than one. And since this is a year of double portion, we will come, I will preach, you will pray, and the elders of the church will lay hands on you before we go. Every time except God decrees otherwise. It's going to be a year of double portion. He will answer your prayers. He will answer the prayers of those who will lay hands on you. And so your blessings will be double. Now, very quickly, let's say thank you to the Almighty God for what he has done tonight. Uh, let's take our offering and uh, like never before let's dance let's dance with the nearest basket and after you've dropped your offering make sure you celebrate with the others shake hands with as many people as you can rejoice with them and uh, even as the Bible says that iron sharpeneth iron, as you are sharing joy with them, joy will be multiplied back to you. So let's take our thanksgiving offering. 
band, please give us song that we can dance to, and we begin to dance. Over to you. You are the mighty God. Father, my God, I want to bless your holy name. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for what you have done tonight. Thank you very, very, very much. Please, Lord, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, please receive the offerings of your children. Bless it, O oh Lord. Use it for your glory. My Father, my God, I decree concerning all your children who are here tonight, from now on, let them be able to give double what they have given now.
Don't let them ever lack again. Father, I decree that within this year, before this year ends, let poverty become a stranger to your children. Please go with them as they go. Confuse their enemies. And by the time we meet again, my Father, my God, I pray that testimonies will be very many. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let me hear a double portion, hallelujah. <laughs> God bless you. Uh, ministers, you have about 30 minutes break. In case you want to ease yourself or you want to reorganize. 30, 30 minutes, minutes break. break. God bless you.